This is Selma Schimmel at the 14th World Conference on Lung Cancer, WCLC, which is organized by the International Association of the Study of Lung Cancer, the IASLC, in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Our discussion begins with Dr. Mariela Varela Garcia. Welcome. Dr. Garcia is Professor of Medical Oncology in the Department of Medicine, the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus in Aurora, Colorado. Hello, Dr. Garcia. Nice to be here. I'm happy to talk to you because you're a research scientist and so much of what's happening in the area of lung cancer involves the identification of, of new pathways and these molecular components and the genotyping of tumors, all of these areas that are influencing the treatment choices and the development of new targeted therapies for lung cancer. These are very complex principles. What I'm hoping we can do with you is in particular talk about the ALK pathway, but in a language that our audience can understand. And I think that you're able to do this for us. My pleasure. So we'll try. Uh, it's, it has been very exciting to be a researcher at this time because, you know, decade ago, we thought that we knew. We knew maybe almost all, and we are about to cure diseases that are very severe. And I think that now we are much more realistic because the big change that happened in this decade is that we all understood how little information we had, how few data we had to support our conclusions. And we are understanding much better what happened inside of the cell that makes a cell being a tumor moving to a cancer stage. So it has been very exciting and I'm very pleased that you be involved in this process. You know, in the past, the way we treated cancer, we bombarded the whole body. You know, you would take systemic therapy and, you know, fast dividing cells, whatever is in that path, they got zapped. But today, we're, we're really narrowing in on these, the, the targets and the unique biologic and molecular components of a given tumor and a given cancer. Exactly, and we learn that some types of tumors are driven by specific molecules. And the ALK that you says, the ALK is the short name, ALK, is the short name for one gene. The long name is anaplastic kinase lymphoma. So this gene that we use, for every gene we have a short name. You know? All the genes we have about 30,000 genes. All the genes have long names and then we create a short name so we can kind of communicate it among us easier with this name. So ALK is the short name. Yeah, but you said lymphoma, so a listener might say lymphoma, well what has that got to do with lung cancer? Exactly, this gene was identified as abnormal in lymphoma in 1994 in several types of lymphoma, not a single type, and was only identified associated with a solid tumor, or specifically lung cancer, in 2007. So a long period happened up to the first discovery with lung cancer, uh, showing that a particular set of lung cancer had derived from abnormalities in the ALK gene. So the ALK is a normal gene. Everybody should have an ALK gene, as well as all the other genes that we have. What happened is that every gene is not supposed to work every time. So the genes are timed during our life. Some of them are better doing in their job during development. Some of them are better 
when we are adults. Some of them work everywhere. They are constitutive genes. Some of them only work in our eyes or in our skin or in our lungs. Okay. So the ALK gene is a normal gene that's supposed to work during embryonary develop, development, only when uh, we are in formation, during our formation. And they should be silenced at that point on. But then a gene has the ability to mutate. Yes, that is a specific mutation that make the gene active again. And how does it happen? So I used to tell my students that every gene has different components. And then I think I compare the components like a body parts. So the gene has a tail, has a body, a central body part, and it has a head. Okay? So why do we think that this part of the gene is called head? Because it's the part that regulates the action of the gene. Mm -hmm. The really part that work is the body and the tail of the gene that really make the activities, uh, whatever activity the gene is supposed to be doing. But nothing happens if the head of the gene doesn't say, yes, you are allowed to work. So it's the head of the gene that determines if the gene is going to be active or silent, right? So in a normal ALK, the head tells during development that the body should work. Then we have in the body of the gene a domain, a specific domain that's called kinase domain. And kinase is a very active reaction, trigger very active reaction. So when the head says work, this kinase domain is activated and the protein is getting produced normally, produced, produced, produced. When the head say, shut up, this stops, then protein is not produced. Then, that's the normal situation in an adult. What happened in the lung cancer? is that there is a break, a physical break, between the head of the gene and the body of the gene. And there is a movement. And another piece of DNA comes, infuses with this body of ALK. But this new head is a, has a non-stopping message. So this new head tells now the chimeric body, because now I have a mix. I have a new head for this body, and this new head is telling you, you should work, you should work, you should work. So the protein gets produced again. And if this mutation happened in an adult stage and happened in the lung, that lung cell First, probably is confused and says, mm, are you sure? But that's the message. So they start producing protein. And that protein allows the cells to grow without control. And that's the first marker for cancer. So once this confused process begins, it doesn't stop itself, it reaches the point of no return and that mechanism just keeps going. Exactly. And it tells that the function of the active part of the gene is under a control 
of a new head now and cannot get rid of that signal. So the signal keep coming that they should be dividing. And in the ALK specifically, that is a very interesting um, uh, story because the most common head, new head, that comes to, uh, to attach it to the body of ALK comes from one gene which nickname is EML4. And EML4 is a gene that in a normal cell controls the development of microtubules. So what's a microtubule? We have trillions of cells. And our cells, most of the time, are dividing in a normal rate. Some cells, the blood cells, divide faster than skin cells. Some cells do not divide when we are adult. But when the cells divide, to separate the two daughters. We have a cell that divides in two. The two daughters are separated by microtubules. So microtubules are critical molecules in the normal stage every time in our life. So we always need microtubules everywhere. So when the, the microtubule gene is programmed to work ever, always. So when the head of the microtubule gene is connected to the tail of the ALK gene that's supposed to be silent, right. is that the problem starts. Because this head gives the message that knows what to do, that's to work. Thank you, Dr. Mariela Varela Garcia. Thank you. Professor of Medical Oncology in the Department of Medicine at the University of Colorado, Anschutz Medical Campus, Aurora, Colorado. Thank you. You're welcome.